So I just finished playing Kudelka and I wanted to do something a little different that I haven't done before and that's give a little bit of a, of a review for it. I'm not going to give it a rating or anything just because I don't have a rating, rating system set up. But I just wanted to talk about how I felt about the game and usually I do that in the credits but I didn't really go into too much because I was planning on going back for the good ending and after so I assume you're gonna watch this after you've watched my let's play or you it's gonna be semi spoilers in this review thing but it's just kind of like a talk through of Kodelka in general but apparently the bad ending is canon and is actually the best of the three endings um, I looked up the good ending online, I watched it on YouTube, and it's it's really short. There's not much to it at all, and it just, it's, I don't know if I'm going to go back and do it at this point, because it's actually extremely difficult to beat the final boss, and like, you have to have a specific tactic, they suggest training a lot, uh, they suggest having the item that you get from beating the gargoyle, which I was not even sure I could do. So I'm not sure I really have the dedication to go back and do that, especially after seeing the good ending and seeing that it's really not that great. Um, I can post a link to it on here if you guys really want. I will work on it and I'll get it, but I just don't really see the point now. But anyway, so I wanted to discuss a few things about Kodalka, what I liked, what I didn't like, and just how I feel about the story in general, and especially in relation to... Um, the Shadow Hearts series. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the bad out of the way first and what I didn't like about the game. Um, and I wasn't a big fan of the battle system in general, especially with random encounters. I mean, Shadow Hearts, they, they always have random encounters in Shadow Hearts. But this game is set up extremely different from Shadow Hearts. Shadow Hearts is, sh is set up like an RPG, so you do a lot of dungeon crawling, and you might need to find a key to open a door or something, but it's not like you're collecting all these items to go into a puzzle, and here's ten pieces of glass that you have to hold on to for half of the game before you find a mosaic to put it in. I mean, it's just, there's just so much with Kodalka in the battle system that it really pissed me off that you would be working on something trying to figure something out and then all of a sudden you're in a battle and it completely would take your focus off of the puzzle or where you're supposed to go to next and I it just that really bothered me a lot of times because like I, I would be working on something like, okay, I'm gonna go do this, and then like trying to figure out where was it that I need to go, which places has, haven't I been yet, and like trying to figure out the horrible map, and then all of a sudden I'm in an, an encounter, and the encounters last a long time. They're not quick battles. So by the time you get out of the battle, it's like three to five minutes later, depending on the battle, and you're like, oh, what was I doing? Uh, I think, did I go in this room yet? I don't know. I can't remember now. Like, maybe it's just my bad memory. But it just, that, it just really bothered me. And it just, it was extremely annoying. <laughs> um, also, I just didn't like the, the battle system. It kind of grew on me the more I played the game. With the, like, the grid layout and, like, monsters moving and, like, you had, you could only go as far as the monsters were. You can go past them, which, I mean, to me, like, in that kind of battle system, uh, your idea would be, like, to flank the enemy, to get behind them. Well, in this, you were not allowed to do that. And once I figured out about, like, putting Edward in front and making him the tank and just having the mages in the back doing their, their magic, like, it, it definitely got better, but it just, it, the battle system in general just it's so different from Shadow Hearts. I also don't like that as you're going through, like I use the items so infrequently. I didn't use them until the very, very end of the game. So all of a sudden, like, I'm getting paralyzed every round and I'm like, shit. I, I don't know what cures paralysis. So like I'm going through all the items and I'm like, I think I think this one does, but it doesn't explain what it does. And there might be a button to hit the pop up the explanation thing. I don't know. 
but it, I was never told about that, and that was extremely annoying, especially for things like the later battles. And I had to constantly be like, okay, potion, potion's gotta heal, right? And I think the listals, I was like, okay, those, I think those do MP. It was like in the one battle, like Edward kept getting paralyzed, and I was like, um, I think the this thing heals paralysis, and luckily it did. But I, I wasn't sure, and the game didn't tell me, and it just expected me to know everything and every item, and that's just not going to happen. Of course, another thing that I bitched about in the Let's Play is the item inventory. I think it is absolutely ridiculous that you have to hold on to your key items in with your regular items. Every game I played, well not every game, because Resident Evil does that as well. But Resident Evil, you also have the drop boxes. So, like, let's say you want to pick up these shotgun shells, but you need to have room to carry a mask or something. You can go and put the shotgun shells into the box, come back later and pick them up. Where this, it was just like, oh, too many things because you have, like I said, like 10 glass shards in your inventory. Like, I had at one point, and I showed in the Let's Play, where I was like, almost the entire screen was key items, and it's like, are you kidding me? And then it's like, they're constantly giving me more items, so it's like you had to strategically pick up things, and like, like you had to constantly like go through whenever you would get a weapon or a drop from an enemy, and like, okay, is this better? Should I keep this? Should I get rid of it? There's no way to sell anything in the game either. Like with most traditional RPGs, since it all takes place in one location. And so you just find yourself dropping things constantly, and then like I ended up dropping an air scroll that I got, which allows you to use magic without waiting. And I was just like, well my guys are amazing at magic anyway, what do I need this for? And then when I started reading through the walkthroughs, it's like, oh, make sure you have lots of those scrolls, they're very important for the later battles. Like, well, I didn't know, I just saw something that does air magic, and I'm like, well, I already have air magic, so I don't need it. So I dropped it. Oh, well, I needed that. It's like, oh, great, okay. And then I had this one thing, it was like a mask, and I never figured out what to do with that. It wasn't equipped, I couldn't use it. Instead I had like one, and <laughs> like I had like a one next to it where all the other key items didn't have that. So I have no idea what that's for. I'll probably have to look that up later, but yeah, just, those were definitely the biggest annoyances of the game. As for what I liked about it, for, well, of course I like the fact that it uh, is the beginning of the Shadow Hearts series. You can definitely see a lot of similarities that carry over. Like I pointed out for the final boss, she had like crests and these circles and stuff on her that um, are very frequent in Shadow Hearts. Uh, we get to find, we get to meet Roger for the first time. We get to see his introduction into the series. Uh, we get to. Uh, see more about the emigre manuscript which they refer to as the emigre document in this game so it was I really liked the tie-ins to Shadow Hearts I thought that was really cool and especially to see Kodalka for who she was because when we meet Kodalka in Shadow Hearts she's a very different person and there's a reason she's a different person now she's had a lot go on in her life so to see her as this like young rogue who's like constantly like spouting this weird stuff and it's like a, a, her character was extremely different than what I was expecting so I was very I was intrigued by that and I really liked it I liked to and we got to finally I got to finally see James and Edward I mean these are all characters that I have heard about again through playing Shadow Hearts and to finally get to see them I thought it was really interesting um, again, back to the Emigre Manuscript, just seeing someone else trying to use it to bring someone back to life. It's a constant theme going on with the Emigre that comes up in, I think, almost every Shadow Hearts game, including Kodalka. <laughs> Kodalka is like the prequel to Shadow Hearts. It is a Shadow Hearts game to me, even though it's not really, but I mean, it's, it's still Shadow Hearts to me. But, so I really liked that. Uh, the story in general I thought was really interesting. Uh, the dialogue was incredibly good. I couldn't get over how good these voice actors were for the game that came out, I think it was 2000 that it came out? Like, we're talking, like, PlayStation generation. Like, I don't fancy didn't even have voices at that point. I mean, it was really... And then, but not only that, that they were good voice actors. So a lot of times you'll have, like, really cheesy, campy um, voice actors, so, like, throughout the 90s. 
I mean, this is 2000, but it's like late, late 90s when they were in development for it. So just to actually have like real voice actors in there that did an incredible job and they're really gripping and like you could like James like you just say something just like oh my god you didn't you didn't think that because he's a horrible voice actor you're just like god you're so annoying as a character and Kodelka like she really had that spunk to her and Edward I liked Edward too I, I just liked all the voice actors I thought they did a great job oh what else did I like about the game. I, just, I did, even though I complained about the random encounters, I love dark RPGs like this. I mean, this is why the Shadow Hearts is my favorite. This is why uh, I really enjoyed Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, and I wish I could get into the other Shin Megami Tensei games, but they're just not the same. I love this whole idea that it's like a survival horror, but you're not constantly worried about getting attacked when you go around a corner. I mean, there's no jump scares in these games for the most part. Except for that creepy face, which I don't want to think about. <laughs> to me, that's a jump scare. <laughs> it's like, fade from black. Here's a face in your face. I didn't like that. Um, but just, just the dark atmosphere. It's so unique. And that's what I really liked about Shadow Hearts and Kodoka as well, is that these took place in the real world. Like we're talking the late 1800s in Wales. Shadow Hearts starts in... Does it start in China? Where does it start? Somewhere in Asia. <laughs> I know they're taking her to... Sh to uh, no, they're taking her to Japan. That's where they're taking her. So maybe they were... Maybe they did start... I don't know. I can't remember where it's <laughs> somewhere in Asia for Shadow Hearts. Um, it's gonna annoy me now. And then like, and also like Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Also, I mean, it it takes place in Tokyo. We're talking real world stuff here, and I just I just love that idea, and it's different. And I mean, a lot of people will probably be like, oh, Dark Souls is a dark RPG, but it's not the same. It's maybe more like an action adventure game and it has RPG elements to it. It's just I just like this standard RPG feel. And but I liked that they tried to incorporate the survival horror elements. Originally they wanted it to be like Resident Evil, and it probably would have been better if it was. I do like that like I said, the that it is an RPG being trying to be a dark RPG. But I think it would have been better if it was more like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Like a traditional survival horror where there are enemies walking around and you have to fight the enemies. But then you couldn't have a party of three. I mean, that really doesn't work in these kind of games. Uh, or those kind of games. So that might be why they went ahead and did this instead. I'm not sure. Actually, they did it because the team was too leery to go far so far from their roots because they are from Square. A lot of the team. So, yeah. Um, I liked that it was short. <laughs> it's much shorter than I thought it would be. It's four discs, too. I mean, it's... I, I think about four disc games, I'm thinking, like, Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, what else? Yeah, Lunar has... Lunar 2 is three discs. Uh, Final Fantasy IX, I think, is four discs as well. Um, and Misa... Those kind of games being really long. But I think part of that must be because of the voice acting. It probably took up a lot of space on the disc, so they had to put it on four disc, even though the game took me like 16 hours to complete or something. So, yeah. So overall, I would recommend this game to someone, again, who's interested in different RPGs that aren't just like fantasy stuff or... Because I feel like a lot of RPGs kind of follow like the, the Tales series where it's like fantasy and magic and all that. And like, yeah, there is magic in this, but it takes place in the real world and it's so different. And the horror at times just catches you completely off guard. And also, I think it's extremely interesting to see the evolution of the Shadow Hearts series. Because we have Kodelka, which is almost entirely a horror game. Uh, it's again, it's not horror jump scares like scary mon like there are scary monsters and stuff. It's that idea that you feel unnerved. You 
you like the story gets you and just the idea of like bringing someone back from the dead and this couple that's killed all these people and there's dead bodies all over the mansion like you walk into a room and there's a giant pile of bodies next to you and it's completely it's completely horror and then you see Shadow Hearts, and I think Shadow Hearts probably does it the best because Kodalka, we see a little bit of humor in it between like what they're saying to James, like making fun of him, him or like when her and Edward get drunk in that one scene, which I love. Um, but we don't have the humor that we have in Shadow Hearts. Where Shadow Hearts has the horror and it has the humor and it has the better setup where it is more like a regular RPG. Yes, there's different things to it because we have the Judgment Ring, but it, sh it, it really incorporates all those ideas of what I loved about what I love about it. And I can see where Kodalka evolved into Shadow Hearts. And I also think it's interesting that Kodalka kind of has better graphics than Shadow Hearts. <laughs> but Shadow Hearts was originally going to be released on the PlayStation and then got ported to the PS2 like right at the end so yeah it doesn't have the greatest graphics in the world but who cares it's Shadow Hearts I love it. Um, then we go into Covenant where there's a little bit of the darkness still there but it's really focusing more on the comedy and the humor that people enjoyed about Shadow Hearts and that's where I feel like that's why I like Shadow Hearts more because I like that darkness and the dark humor like Yuri makes comments in the first game that you're just like can I have borderline if that's okay or not <laughs> and once we get to the second shadow hearts like it's he doesn't really make as many comments like that i mean he makes a couple like the giant pussy one um if you haven't seen shadow hearts 2 i know that sounds way out of place but this is the area we're talking about um and then into from the new world where there's almost no darkness at all. They try to throw in some darkness uh, with the villains and then kind of at the end of the game, but it just doesn't really work at all. And I might play that one next. Yeah. So overall, like, I did enjoy Kodalka. I really did. And like I said, I'm glad it was short, that it wasn't too long, but I kind of expected more from it too. Like, I. I like, like with the whole Patrick thing, I mean, we I thought we were going to get to see him and talk to him and, oh, he's dead. It's like, oh. Never mind. But this is still going on. Like, why, why were the husband and wife still killing people if Patrick was dead? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Maybe they didn't know he was dead. I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, like I said, I did enjoy Kodaka. Uh, I would suggest it to anyone who likes the Shadow Hearts series and wants to see where it comes from and enjoys uh, darker games. It's definitely very dark, that's for sure. So be warned before you go into it. Um, the battles, like some of them were extremely easy. And then like the one that I ended up rage quitting over, uh, that one was really hard, and I felt like it was hard for really no reason. And then, like, the final battle, I mean, they don't expect you to beat it. Like, it's, it's extremely difficult. And then the guard, like, it was like, you would go, there was, like, no, like, moderately hard bosses. They're either really easy or really, really, really difficult. So that's, that's kind of annoying, too. I guess that goes into things I don't like about the game. <laughs> Anyway, so um, thanks for listening and uh, let me rant, or not rant, but just talk about Kodalka. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the next Let's Play will be starting soon, and I'm sure a number you will be happy about what it is. But we'll see. Okay, bye!